It's exactly two minutes after eight. Now, here we are. Uh, if I introduce one of my guests to you, and you knew him from way back, you say, praise the Lord. Thank God for his life. Uh, let me just straight away say that we're being joined by Mr. George uh, Asa, who is a counselor, and my friend, Timothy Bintum, who, you know, hear his story and say hallelujah to God. Welcome to the conversation. Thank you very much. Yeah. So there's this research that's triggered this conversation uh, that says that uh, children between the ages of 8 and 12, they were evaluated uh, for certain traits. Mm. These children were really stubborn mm. growing up, uh, but in their adult life they were tracked again and it was realized that such people actually surprisingly succeed. They are overachievers. They do well. So, you know, we thought that, we know that some Parents may have very difficult children, yeah. they can't even handle it. Will some research like this, should it bring a lot of hope to parents who have children like that? I'll start with you. Is yeah, of that? course. Um, you know, it's up to the parent to observe the child closely. What we fail to do normally is uh, uh, we don't have time for our children. We don't have time to observe the child. And we always believe that uh, stubbornness is negative. It is not always negative. Because sometimes you need to be stubborn to achieve what others cannot achieve. So you need to be stubborn to even study hard. So it depends on how the parent will accept the child. Mm. He or she is your child, and you need to accept the child the way he or she is and find a way for him or her. That's exactly what the scriptures say. Anyway, my counseling is faith based, so by all means, I'll be. Uh, referring to the scriptures. The scriptures is train up the child in the way he or she should go, the child's own way, which means that God himself has planted, placed something within the child to enable him accomplish the assignment given to him or her by God. Mm. But imagine an elder of a church dealing with a very stubborn child. I'm not sure readily they would think, oh, that's a, that's a good trait. What makes that child stubborn? How do you define stubbornness? Is it because you ask him to do something and he's asking you questions or what? If the child is asking questions, questions need answers and they need to be answered. So if you say stubborn, what do you mean? I have one not as stubborn as others might think because okay. I had understanding, yeah. And uh, she always want to ask you a question about why you should do this, why you should do that, why sh this shouldn't be done. This is a teenager? Even from her childhood. Okay. Yeah. She's now, uh, I would say mother, a mother of two. Okay. Uh -huh. So, but she's achieving a lot for herself compared to the other siblings. She, she is quite but did different. you even understand her from the beginning? Yeah, because I know that uh, there are differences. Okay. Every a child is unique. Yeah. And he saw her own way. So, yes, I knew that okay. from the beginning. All right. Um, Timothy, you were a very stubborn child growing <laughs> up, correct? Were you there? I, mean, I heard the stories. <laughs> I had a conversation <laughs> with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, pretty much. I think so. Yes, yeah? Yes. Do you think yes. your parents understood you then? Absolutely not. I mean, I think that uh, our greatest drawback as parents is that we don't, we don't find ways to harness particular things, character traits in our kids. Uh, the kid could be climbing the refrigerator or mm. uh, doing stuff that uh, the kid refuses to sit. Sit is not sitting. It's running yeah. around. Mm. Of course, the kid is a, an, explore, an explorer, wants to find out stuff, find their own answers and, you know, make it happen. And I think that we would misconstrue that particular trait to be stubbornness. And uh, if you are able to, to identify what it is that the kid's eventual reasons are, and even at that age, then you are able to harness that particular character trait right and channel it right to make sure that eventually the person becomes. Personally, I mean, I was very adventurous. I mean, I would, I would, 
you know, don't go here and I'm going to be free, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I want to find out why you're saying don't go there. And mm. then, you know, mommy would always say stuff like, uh, it, it you, it'll say, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, so why is she saying that? Uh, uh, Let me uh, try it and see. Drugs are not mm. good, you know. So started smoking mm. at 13. And that was as a result of my adventurous whatever. Wanted to find out, hey, hey, you know, what exactly is in there for me. And I think that if you don't have parents who are able to, to look at that bad character trait, mm -hmm. face value is a bad character trait. Mm -hmm. It being, you being adventurous. Mm -hmm. okay? If you're not able to look at that in a positive light as a parent, and then try to harness that one, one and throw a lot of stuff your way that make you make your hands full with adventure. Then you as the kid will now begin to channel it in different directions because mommy didn't throw, daddy didn't throw enough stuff at you but to make you adventure. Uh, I'm just going to say that that can be very difficult. Listen, you're doing all the things that I know is not good how else can I turn those things around? I mean, you're going out very late. You're hanging out with boys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're smoking. How do I turn that situation around? Because you're, you can't, you're not hearing me. Yeah, because you, you, you waited till I began smoking. Exactly. Exactly. There, there was a tree begins to tail to a, in a particular direction. It takes a lot of work to get it back. But when it's at the very tender stage when it's growing, that's when you do all the work. You know, put through a little soil to the left because it's going that way. Put some stones because it's going that way. And then by the time they are 13 and they are old enough, 17, and they are doing all the boys' things, at that point, their minds have been shaped right. We leave the upbringing of our kids to the teachers in class and to their friends, which shouldn't be the case. We, as, as Africans, culturally, we don't have very open communication lines with our kids. And so they tend to take advice from all, all sorts of quarters they're very good friends and then they're asking them what do I do now because of course when, she, when you're watching a movie with your kid and a scene comes that's not very palatable for the kid uh, TV, no? you know and then you try to but ideally that particular attitude makes the kid more I don't know man, you know why does you want the TV off so then they, be, they, they begin to pry and they won't ask you because you won't give them answers they'll ask their friends and so it's how, as a mother, as a father, it's how you deal with them even before they get to the stage where they, 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 they're taking decisions for themselves. Very, very tender stage. You deal with it before they get older. Mm. Mr. Sasa, I, I saw you were shaking your head and agreeing yeah. to a lot of things Timo was saying. Yeah, um, the problem comes from uh, our parents, our parents, let me say, parents mm. in general. Uh, we don't give our children quality time and we don't want to observe them closely. Uh, let me give you a scenario. Uh, you can visit a, a nursery class and you at maybe break time or general uh, activity time, you see the children behaving differently, mm -hmm. uniquely. You see one maybe grouping one or two people with a cane. So you stand up, you get up here, you sit down here. And then the teacher will say, hey, you, you like doing that. But it tells you something. It tells you the kind of child or adult you will be in future. And then you see others grouping, uh, maybe a few colleagues here painting themselves. And we will say, well, this class is uh, full of cacophony. But there and there you see how unique and how gifted each child is. So it's up to the children to observe closely, like he rightly said. Our parents don't understand us. Do, they just refuse to understand. They want the children to go their own, uh, the parents' way. Because that the parents, a, they have experienced what they don't want the child to experience. So that's the whole idea of parenting, isn't it? That's why I'm not supposed to lead you to where I know it's not good for you. You teach, you instruct, you give examples. In teaching and instruction and discipline, you should, give, you, sh you should give the child the benefit of all the aspects of life. You shouldn't smoke. Why shouldn't I smoke? You should be able to tell the child why he or she shouldn't smoke. So should I, should I um, Timo, perhaps if you had been taken to 
uh, maybe the psychiatric hospital. We've been talking about the psychiatric yeah. hospital a lot these days. If you had been taken there at that young age of 12, for instance, would it have changed your mind? Because that's, and if they had shown you that, oh, this is somebody who did what we're asking you not to do, and this is how the person turned out to be? Probably. I mean, uh, I don't think a one-time event would have changed my mind, but that would have been the pinnacle of it. I mean, I, 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 I want to believe that if there was a subtle, you know, a subtle uh, instructing in, the, in that particular department, say, uh, drugs are bad, drugs do this, I mean, whatever, because they wouldn't, they wouldn't have known that I would have done drugs. Mm. So the, it, would have, it would have to be an open field. Mm -hmm. So all the, all, all the vices and their downsides, it's a good thing to have a visual represent, representation of how bad it is. And so, yes, I'm sure if I had gone through the psychiatric hospital, I, 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 at a very tender age, just before I started, or maybe even way before then, I, 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 would, have, I would have built some sort of a perception mm. about the downsides of it and probably okay. wouldn't have tried it. Okay. But I, I'm glad I did. I mean. You're glad you did, you know, <laughs> to get the experience and... No, I mean, I, I mean, it's, this is, I, 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 I don't know. If kids are watching, I don't want to say some things. But I think that uh, the good and the bad work together for good. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think if, if I had a very good and smooth life all the way up until now, I wouldn't be in the space I am now. I don't think... So I, you, you are, I mean, you are what the research describes, actually. Hmm. You turn out extremely well, you know, like... I don't know about extremely. <laughs> no, I, I would add extremely to it because yeah. even now I know that you're still doing a lot of things. There's still a lot of things that you want to achieve. But quickly, there was something you wanted to say. Yeah, uh, he made an important point. He was talking about the timing, uh, the formative uh, period for the child. Mm. Uh, sometimes we wait till the child uh, reaches a certain stage before we begin to train them. It's at a tender age, even when, as soon as the child is born, there's training starts, it's, but they are different levels. The training have different levels, and I have coined in my own way, there's the syrup, syrup level, like going to the hospital. We have the tablet level, we have the capsule level, and each and every level has a way of handling the child. Okay. And that was the point he was making, at the tender age, that's when you need to observe very closely and then you find out exactly what the child will want to be in future and then you guide him or her through it. You, you normally say that he or she is stubborn. No. At tender age, what is stubbornness to that child? Let, let me give you a certain <laughs> scenario and, and we hear stories like these all the time. Uh, here's somebody who is raising the child mm. in the best way. I mean, you tell your daughter all the things you can tell her. You give her, she sees all the things that's been happening. You're open to your daughter. Mm -hmm. And then she comes up with pregnancy. I mean, you've told her everything. She's exposed to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not expecting mm -hmm. her to. Mm -hmm. What did a parent like that do wrong? How do you see that negative situation as a parent and not give up on, on your child? Maybe, um, Timo, because you've been there before, I'm you will know what to before. say. No, you haven't been pregnant before. <laughs> <laughs> because, listen, sometimes a parent will say, I did everything right. Yeah. And people even observing yes. can tell that this man or woman did everything right. Yeah, you see, you see in, in, in all of this, I like what the uh, uh, counselor said. He said, uh, because I'm a faith-based organization, I would always refer to the Bible. You could do everything right, but without the God factor, <laughs> trust me, because he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He says, without me, you can do nothing. nothing. And so it means that you can try everything. You can do everything you know how to do. Mm. As long as there's the, the, the Jesus factor is not in that equation. There is a huge likelihood that it will not. So you pray for your child, even as you train you the child. You pray with the child. You pray for the child. You sow seeds for the child. You because that's an integral part of the child's growing up. The Jesus factor. You can't. You can't. I, I mean, I, I can't underscore it any better. It is. It is. It is important. It is imperative. It is extremely uh, uh, vital 
to the to the success of that child's life. Mm. You know. Mama B, I checked the report. And the report is um, the child's uh, success will depend on SES, which is uh, the parent's socioeconomic status. Okay. That is an important factor. And that's one factor, the whole thing. Mm. And then uh, sometimes families also need to go through such situations. I mean, when you are dealing with society like ours, what do you expect? If the child is adventurous, she might go out there and have the feel of it. Despite all the training, all the talks, all mm -hmm. the devotions at home and everything, she might go out there. But if you want to see a functional family, the family that functions well, it, it should depend on their ability to come together, rally, rally around the child and give her the support so that uh, he or she will overcome. Because we may go out there to, to try, to test it, mm -hmm. how it feels. And then he or she comes back and says, Dad, I'm sorry, Mom, I'm sorry, what are you going to do? If the family is strong and it is functional, except the family is dysfunctional, that's when you see the dad disowning the elder, who say, mm -hmm. I'm disowning you because, look, you brought disgrace. And all. No, 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 not at all. If the family is strong and it's functional, you need to rally around, come together, support the child. You can even adopt the child, or your grandchild, and then allow the child to continue. There are many scenarios people come to me with such problems, and they, they are children are doing very well, very, very well, extremely well. Some have even completed uh, universities, and they are working their career. Uh, women, let me put it that mm. way. Yes, but they are children. They got pregnant at SHS, GHS, and others. So it will depend on the family. The SES factor is very, very important. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I like that a lot. <laughs> so, you know, Timo, what does doing all the bad things teach a young man growing up? Are, are you kind of like learning whilst you're doing, or you're just chilling? Chilling, chilling. So you're not <laughs> thinking? I mean, I think that thinking is the last thing on your mind. I mean, you're. You're having a ball, I mean, really, because uh, uh, they would say life is lived forwards, but it's understood backwards. So Mama he was thinking. <laughs> was he? He was thinking about other things. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he wasn't thinking? He was thinking. Course, I exactly he was mean, thinking about no. other things. <laughs> Not that exactly. expected from the, father, uh, the parents, but exactly. he was, I was thinking. thinking. I was thinking. I remember, I mean, back in the day, I remember mm. I was at home uh, at dawn, 2 a.m., and these guys scale the wall and come behind my window and and they, you know, and Charlie was up. And you know what it is? Charlie, some boys come from Yankee. The way did they smoke? Come go show them, see you from my father. <laughs> Guy. <laughs> you know, I, I was at a little party a couple of weeks ago and the young man reminded me. I met, I met him. He said, Charlie, you didn't remember? <laughs> You know, I and you actually, yeah, you actually go out and just to go show, say, go fit smoke weed past somebody. I mean, and yeah. yes, so I was thinking, but like, like he rightly said, I was thinking mm -hmm. in, in, in different, yeah, different, different. And I think yeah. that when you are there, you think you are the smartest dude yeah. alive. Yeah. When you are within that particular frame, you think that, I mean, nothing anybody says makes more sense yeah. than what you think you're doing. Mm. Up until, even when you have huge challenges thrown at you, even when within that phrase something happens and, you know, your boy dies or he gets uh, uh, into the long arms of the law or something, you're like, Charlie, guy, lose God, you know. I mean, instead of you saying, hey, Charlie, it's likely that this thing could happen to me mm. and then mm. take a cue from that mm. and stuff, you're looking at other ways of evading the, those, you know, uh, 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 probabilities. And, and so it's after the process is done. And I think that, like he rightly said, the process sometimes is extremely important to the, to the, to the success of the person's future. Mm -hmm. And God makes it happen for a reason. Yeah. Because with, within the, between the promise and the, between the promise the prophecy of the promise, what God says about you, and it actually happening. Yeah.
It's a condiment of pain. Mm. And that pain is necessary for you to become all God wants you to be, to function 100% in the promise. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so if you sidestep that, or if you make the person feel like, uh, you know, what happens eventually is the person never gets the promise mm. because the support systems yeah. that God puts around that person to be able to go through the pain to get to the promise, the support systems give them. Yeah. And so mm. the person stays yeah. in the pain. And you see people who had one kid and then that's where their life ended. They, 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 there's nowhere to go or started to smoke. I know a young man, he was a musician. I don't mention his name. I still see him and he's begging for money in traffic and he's from a very good home. His father disowned him and he's still doing drugs incessantly and he's looking more unkempt every every, every other day. And I, 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 I'm sad about it, but there's nothing you can do. His mm -hmm. family thinks, oh, he's bringing shit to the family so that yeah. he lives in the ghetto mm -hmm. and he doesn't, he mm -hmm. comes home occasionally mm -hmm. once every three, four months. And that shouldn't be the case, the support systems. Mm -hmm. So when, he, when, when somebody gets into trouble, like Councillor rightly said, I think that that is when, I mean, what is the use of a brother and a sister and a father and a mother if it's not to help their sibling or their daughter or their son when, they went, when they're in trouble or when, when they've, they've gone wayward or whatever. That is when true love is brought to bear on a particular Case. But don't you think people can also get tired of helping, helping, helping all the time? I, I they do it all the time. You return to it. They've given you all the support they feel they can give you, but you keep returning to the bad things. I think that what is the what is the formula for help? What would you call help? Some people would be would, would take their kids to the shrine and try to help the guy, or or they would. For them, if I institute very militaristic measures, then the kid will sit up. Mm. But 85% of the time, that actually drives the kid further into the pit. And instead of embracing the kid and showing more love and affection and warmth, they'll break your heart a couple of times, yes. But that's part of it, part of the journey. The more love you show in the midst of all the calamity, from your perspective, that is, mm. the kid will get better over time. One more thing, you know, when you were known as the best chap in the area who could <laughs> smoke and everything, <laughs> could somebody have broken through that moment, that space of yours? Well, somebody did. My wife mm. did. I mean, yeah. it took a while. But that was, but, uh -huh. but, but I was I'm, still smoking. When I'm she talking came. about your parents. Could any any of them have broken through? Do you think? Yeah. How? I think that I was very good at hiding it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so mm -hmm. uh, they, they didn't even know the enormity mm -hmm. of the situation. They didn't know how bad it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll come home and I'm, you know, and on Friday I'm singing TGIF. And my daddy will look at me and be like, I know why you are singing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's Friday, you're going on the town. You know, know, but he still didn't, didn't know how bad it was. I mean, your boy can be bad. So that's that's fine. Let him chill a bit. Let him go through the. I'm just thinking what he was probably thinking at the time. Oh, so that's not your own. No. But I, I mean, <laughs> why, why bad? Not like, not no, good. I mean, not good, not your, your, your children yeah. must be a, a little mm. adventurous. Yes, yes but so, so you want to give them a little room. Yeah, yeah, your boy and your girl. Your kids, if you say boys, yeah. as if mm. and the boys can be mm. bad and the girls Oh, I was talking about you. you. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's how yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, so, but I, I mean, sorry, sorry. But all in all, I think that as parents, we need to be able to get through to our kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's why I'm, and I'm using your personal situation because I'm wondering, you know, what's the formula for breaking through, for not just seeing the pretense, but seeing beyond the pretense? No, so you see, like, that it comes back to the same point again. You, 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 you don't start to become big brother, father at 19. Okay. You start it, early. Yeah, you, 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 you win the child's confidence. And so the person, yeah, exactly. my dad was more into prayer and church mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, but there wasn't the, the real fatherhood, sort of phobia casa kind of thing. So yeah. I, sought, I sought advice from different quarters, which was okay. detrimental. This is very important. This is really important. Parents are into a lot of other things. Mommy, parenting is a very difficult thing. Um, 
I don't know, but this part of the universe, we don't take it serious. It's a difficult area of our lives. I thought we took it serious then, you know. This part of town, we feel we're doing a better job than those else. Yeah, actually, I think so. I mean, That's the feeling, but uh, mm -hmm. we are doing it the wrong way. Uh -huh. We're doing it the wrong way. If you are too hard on your children, you break them. So the parents should be flexible and firm. When something is flexible and firm, it's not easily broken. So you begin at a tender age, and you should also observe and notice the challenges the children go through. Our generation is different. Well, I'm past 50. So you the challenges, <laughs> I don't thank you, I have grandchildren. Oh, wow. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Sorry, Grandpa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the challenges differ from generation to another generation, mm. but they are also similar. Um, you was talking about between teenagehood and adolescent. The 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 principle may be the same from generation to the another uh, other generation, but the method is also different. The challenges the children go through is totally, completely different from puberty, teenagehood, adolescent. They have different challenges. And at a point in time, between teenage and adolescent, it's like the whole world is, is falling on them. They think about a whole lot of things. You're thinking about your friends, those you need to reshuffle. Mm. Those you need to abandon, those you need to continue with, uh, close friends, relationship, your parents' expectations, uh, school expectations, expectations even from the society. And <laughs> the child is, is going through all these challenges. And that's when the, children, uh, the parents need to get closer and closer. Someone might ask, uh, how will I know? How will I know my children? My child smokes. Well, if you are closer, you get to know. How will I know my child has a boyfriend at the age of fourteen? If you get closer, you get to know. If, if you, you get somebody shared some tips some time back, mm -hmm. is it uh, going to the child's room when the child is sleeping late at, at night? Go through the books. You can go, to go your through at any given time. My my last born is about thirty years. She still will come to me naked. I can go to her room naked. When, not myself, but when she is to be naked. And but, that, but that's not very good, is it? Who says it's not good? I'm just thinking. No. <laughs> <laughs> it will be bad only when the father himself is not trained, cultured, or he himself has his own problems with women. Mm. Uh -huh. But if she is your child, why not? Why not? Yeah. Your mom can come to you even when we're adults. My mom will come to us and see our nakedness and you will know exactly what you are going through. But these days we can't do that. I mean, so that's it. That's the point. Yeah. The children should get closer, learn to accept the children and accept the uniqueness of each child. Mm. Each child is different, totally different. The principles are the same, but the method should differ. Mm. Okay, uh, let me just announce that you can join us because I wanted you to share your experiences and uh, those children you think are giving you the the heart problems. I, I thought that you know with Timothy being here, you'd see him today and and look at your child again, a second look at your a third look at your child again and say, Charlie, praise the Lord, God will do it. So give us a call zero three zero two two one one six nine one or two zero. 302-211-6912. Let me read some messages. You can also send us WhatsApp messages on 0560-800,000. So here's Raphael Efum from Tafi Atoma in the Vault region saying, your guests have in-depth knowledge and we are well experienced with the subjects under discussion. However, mm -hmm. one can get tired sometimes about helping a family member who has gone wayward with drugs because I tried on several occasions and it nearly landed me in jail. Sometimes it's quite dangerous to be continuously helping a drug addict. That's from Raphael. Thanks, Raphael, uh, for your message. This one says, a responsible father bought an education insurance policy for his child 
only for her to get pregnant at stage six. Hmm. Children need prayers <laughs> more than anything else. That's from Pakujo in Wager watching the show. Uh, this one says, oh, is that those traits tend to be great achievers with good moral values or just great achievers? I'm not clear with the research because achievements can happen in so many ways from Tevia Delali, Silas, and Techiman. Well, good observation. And if you read the in-depth in -depth report, that's also one of the things mm. they touch on slightly. But let me just take a, a, a phone call now. Kenneth is joining us. Kenneth, good morning. Good morning. Yes, Kenneth, how are you? I'm fine. We thank God. Let's hear you. What are your thoughts? Good morning. I am. I'm fine, I'm doing well. Yeah, Can my thoughts on mm -hmm. this is, uh, I really have a daughter. Yeah, I'm a police officer. And from the look of things, uh, when the nature of your job and your daughter, when you don't really get closer to them, my God, <laughs> you just made the rat out, out of it. We, you go to work and come to, to to the house and you you just find this bad boys and girls outside the back. You see you have this beer bars and stuff. Oh my <laughs> So so Kenneth I see I see you're thinking you probably have a challenge. Is it yeah. do you want some tips to go uh, about I've it? Also, I've been a victim because I stayed at Accra Central to do. Okay. Yeah. okay. So how, yeah. how, how did you manage it? How did you get out of it? <laughs> that, that, hmm. Kenneth? It was, it was to a uh, friend. OK. Yeah, but, it was to a friend. Hmm. He, he introduced me to, to a church. Every Sunday, this guy would just come to my house. Every Sunday morning, six o'clock, you just come to my house. I'm inviting you to a church. I said, I not So, Kenneth, what do you what do you think your family could have done at that point? Could they have also helped you? Do you think? So, my my my, my dad was working. Hello, Kenneth. Yeah. They could have they could have gotten closer to me, but it okay. seems they they like they saw me to be a very different person. Mm. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Kenneth. We are listening. Kenneth. Okay, we seem to have uh, some issues with the the line there, but Kenneth was making a very important point, and when he said to do, Timo said <laughs> 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 that place is dangerous. Uh, but I think the thing about getting closer, because he also says I think they, should, they, they could have been closer. Uh, if you are, let's just build a little bit on what Kenneth was sharing. If you are in an area, I mean, that's, that's where you live. There's nothing you can do about it. There are all these joints around you, and you're raising children in that environment. How can you protect them? How can you help them? First, you should know your child. Second, you should know the friends of your child. Tell you, you should know the family of the friends of your child. You should know all these things, um, but we, we normally don't. Mm. We don't do it. Okay. <laughs> the children we, come with their my child uh, with some friends, and that's all. You let me speak know the to child. let me speak to Godwin. We'll continue mm. on this. Godwin from uh, Katanga. Godwin. Yeah. 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 Be... How are you, Godwin? Uh, fine, thank you. Cool. You see, I like the discussion on on the table this morning. You see, we've all been to these kind of situations before, smoking, bad friends, and those things. And you see, some of the things, it depends on the mindset of the person that is in the act, the smoking attitude, the bad attitude, and everything. Somebody might, somebody in, in, in a way, when he is in the act, it is easy to capture the person when you get closer to the person and then understand the person. Mm. Uh, when I was in those acts, those days, uh, I would say 
people knew me, people saw the act, but yet how to identify the act in which I was, was difficult because I can hide with it a lot. I'll go secretly do it and come and people don't know how I go there and come and do it. Mm. So you see, at times getting closer to the child and then knowing what the child wants and the reason why he's doing those kind of things. And after those kind of things, what is the achievement? What does he achieve out mm. of out of what he does? Okay. You must get all those the understanding of all those things. Okay. You see, it shouldn't be that maybe you going, you know that he smokes, and after that you because of because it's a bad habit, you want to put a stop to it. No, you try just trying to put a stop to it. It's just like zero percent work done. Okay. But then try to get the reason behind why he's doing it. If you want to take that thing out of his way, can you? Improvise something different that will make it fix at the point where you are taking that attitude from. Okay. Okay. Yes. Very important. I mean. so, very, very important. Okay. So you shouldn't just go and then pick the smoking out or pick the bad attitude out. Okay. But when you pick the bad one out, you pick something inside there mm. to All make. Right. And, and then to talk about the in uh, leaving your child going out and coming in going out and coming in all the time it's like you have to you have to uh let me say you have to you have to do this thing uh, uh, God, we have we have some other other persons on the phone line, so we we have to cut it here. But I thank God that you turn out right. Thanks for sharing. Frank is from Cape Coast. Good morning, Frank. Thanks for holding. Yeah. Good morning. Yes, Frank. Let's hear you. Yeah, uh, I really love the discussion. Very well. And then uh, I also have a brother who is also a victim of this smoking and this drug stuff. And uh, I want to. Say that it's also uh, the environment is also part okay we also grew up from a place where there are rough people Cape Coast uh, I don't know if you know Malcolm mm -hmm. this uh, fishmongers and stuff and my, my brother was a victim because he goes to school that time we had uh, the afternoon shift and the morning shift so and that and their mother is like oh you always want to know when uh, he goes to maybe we say I'm going to the afternoon shift or mm -hmm. in the morning shift. He also goes to work. So what my brother does was for him to go to school, he doesn't go to school. He just goes to where the fisherman people are. And you know, with these people, then he started smoking. It became a habit for him. It it took prayers. It took prayers from my mother. He did very well. And one day he came to the house and then he was like mom i don't feel well i feel that there's something inside me i feel like i'm i'm getting crazy so we we we, we prayed for him and then later on he said he wants a hair to be okay but but he's doing well now right he's doing well he's, he's now a pastor oh okay mm -hmm. all right he's now That's a pastor nice. and everybody is very proud of him yeah. because of it, 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 yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing, Frank. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, our last call on this uh, issue is Bashiru from Sola. Bashiru, yeah. good morning. Yeah, good morning, madam. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks for calling. Let's hear you. Yeah. Yeah, depending. Yeah, good morning, madam. <laughs> yes, okay. good morning, Bashiru. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, uh, mine is. Uh, all this uh, child upbringing also mostly depends on the mindset of the person. Can you hear me? I can, loud and clear. Yeah. yeah. So normally, when I was growing up, I realized that my mindset was very difficult to convince. Uh -huh. So any time, uh, maybe a friend or friends are trying to push me to do things, it's very, very difficult to convince me. So, mm -hmm. me, I'm looking at the point that, as your panel said earlier, 
God's uh, intervention is also number one. So I think when you add prayers and then you have that mindset to allow, uh, in order not to allow people to convince you, I think that one do it better. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing. Uh, let me take your uh, comments on WhatsApp. Nana Kwame Nkofordia says, I'm a boy. And when I was a child, my dad used to bully me all the time when uh, I was at fault. And fear of bullying all the time drives me out of the house each time it happened. Okay. All right. Nana Kwame Nkofordia sharing uh, his experience with us. This one says, good morning. I really like the topic of discussion today. And you guys look good. Well, thanks a lot for watching all the time. I think I was stubborn even from the utterances of my parents then, but I think I had a focus mm -hmm. that I wasn't allowing my parents to call me not to achieve. I defy them uh, severally to achieve my aim. Uh, I resisted farm work because of my want for education, but you must be closer to your kids and allow them to achieve their dreams because you would have known them better. That's from Simon uh, Tengan and Nandom sending us this message. Thanks, Simon, uh, for the message. This one says, love the topic you are discussing and your panel, especially Timo. He's a soldier on retirement, so he really knows what's, what he's talking about. <laughs> so, they nurtured some of us into becoming big boys, so salute, big brother. Okay, uh, thanks for that message. Elinam from Aplau says, it's very important that parents get really close and very personal with their children. I grew up with both parents, and at a point in time, it felt like I was managing my own life. My parents would just scold you and beat you up any time you went wrong. They, uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't anything like smooth discussion, but basically I wasn't doing well in school, and my parents were in front of that. It was almost like discrimination. Elena from Aflao uh, sharing that experience with us. Uh, this one says, I think parents should not always treat their children the same way because they are unique. Punishments can change one child and just speaking softly and gently to another would also do the trick. The fact that you gave, always gave your first child and he or she turned out well doesn't mean it would work for the other child. Elsie from Wa sending that message as well lots of messages i may not be unfortunately be able to read everything because we've got to run uh this one uh, this person wants the most number and says i really admire timothy and lord kenya for the positive bold step they have taken uh okay sylvester in mampong says child nurturing is very important at the first six years of birth that's the formative years so that is where parents should be very careful about the upbringing of their kids whatever you put in the children will uh, rep repress to the unconscious memory which will resurface in later years thank you Sylvester for the thoughts uh, okay um, bad children come from bad parents from <laughs> Nilai uh, Cambodia Adiembra sharing the thought with us. it's simple um, okay let me just read the last one. This one says, poverty is another influence that can make children go away. What? I was raised in a home where there was no TV, no computer, and uh, in fact, nothing except a bed to sleep on. So I was always out, though my dad didn't like what I was doing. He just couldn't keep me home and so couldn't control my company. Uh, Mumuni in Tumu sharing that experience with us. Uh, this one says, I believe parents of today are too distant from their children. Uh, oh, Timo, this this Delta. Now you're giving me your name. Okay, Delta from Accra says, I think punishment can change the child. Delta again, Mr. Timothy, I really admire you a lot. You look good. That's the message that came with it. Uh, just before you know, we we rise on this conversation. There's this thinking that if you expose your child to all the things and you don't restrict them so much, they turn out well. Is it true? You know, like um, if you don't hide anything from them, you you this is sex. This will, this is what will happen to you. Should you have sex? So you weigh the two and decide which one you want to do. These are drinks. I can take you to a pub and show you this is what happens in this place. If I did that with my child, would that be better? I'm exposing you to what is out there. When, when okay. do you have to do Boom. that? Okay. You see, <laughs> timing. Time That's what I was Absolutely. saying. Syrup tablet capsule if capsules are bitter uh, drugs but they are encapsulated in something that's covered now syrup has it comes with some 
flavors. Mm, some sweetness. <laughs> exactly. So when? Okay. And uh, so when? how will the child take it? How will he or she understand okay. what you are telling him? All right. So <laughs> that's okay. it. Like. Timon, but you need should, to do should it. You, okay. you need to do it. I, it got to a point that I need. I had to call all my girls, sat them down, and tell them everything about sex. Okay. Yes. I told them. I, and told them how, even when they can enjoy it. Oh. Yeah. Even when they were not married? Not married. Wow. When they can enjoy it and how they can enjoy it. Okay. So they started getting married. Interesting. <laughs> Timo, should I be the first person to give my son a taste of alcohol? As in literally? Yes. Practically? Yes. And send it? Yes. Should I because, do you know, when they do and send it, and send it mm. they no. don't know what they're no, no, tasting. No, 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 definitely not. So should I be the first person to let my, my, my children taste? Must my children taste alcohol? That's a tough question, right? Mm -hmm. Must they? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, must they? I mean, I mean, okay. Must they taste alcohol? I mean, I think that, I think that, that particular whatever must be left to the kid. Okay. Like he said, timing. Timing. Once you 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 expose them to that particular uh, uh, environment mm -hmm. and at a particular point in time. Yes, you leave them to. I don't think that every, you see, the Bible calls it uh, the sin that easily besets us. You, you might be a liar, but you never, ever fornicate. Okay. You know? okay. I, might, I might like to drink, but I'll never lie. You know? Okay, so there are things that come to us very easily by reason of our makeup, mm -hmm. our genetic, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Okay. But I'm saying that, yes, <laughs> uh, he might not drink ever. So why yeah. would you be yeah. I like this. Thank you so much. I, I'm still trying to raise children, so <laughs> oh, I've learned okay. a lot from oh, okay. you as well. Yes, yes, I've Thank you so much uh, for sharing. Uh, and then people want your numbers, so I don't know how, if with your permission, we can respond yeah. and give them. Uh, Timothy, thanks for being here. Councillor George, uh, as said, this will not be the last time. We'll have you again. Thank, Thank you so you. much. As for You're Timo, welcome. unless we use Grida to wear Boogie <laughs> on the morning. <laughs> thanks for being here. Thank We've got a maid uh, in Ghana for to talk about here on the AM show, so please do stay.